something extraordinary is unfolding behind the glass walls of Apple Park. And surprisingly, most people are missing the real story. On the surface, it looks like just another chip upgrade cycle. The familiar rhythm of more performance, better efficiency, smaller nanometers, and incremental gains that tech companies announce every year. But when you step back and connect the dots between leaks, internal code names, supply chain signals, and long-term architectural decisions pointing toward 2026, a much bigger picture begins to emerge. Apple is not simply refreshing its desktop lineup or chasing benchmark headlines. Apple is quietly dismantling an entire legacy product category and replacing it with a radically different vision of what desktop computing should be. This vision is built around smaller machines, extreme efficiency, and performance that punches far above its weight, redefining what professional even means in the desktop world. At the center of this shift is the upcoming M5 generation, and if you were planning to buy a high-end desktop Mac or even a powerful Windows PC, you may want to pause, because what Apple is preparing for mid-2026 could fundamentally change how value, performance, and form factor are defined in the desktop market. This is not a normal upgrade cycle, and it's not a marketing refresh. This is a strategic reset, one that has been years in the making. For decades, desktop computers have followed a predictable pattern. Bigger cases meant more power, more fans, more heat, and more electricity. Performance scaled with physical size and price, and if you wanted the best, you accepted noise, bulk, and complexity as unavoidable trade-offs. Apple Silicon shattered that assumption once already, but the M5 era appears ready to finish the job completely. What makes 2026 so important is that Apple is aligning hardware, silicon architecture, pricing, and product positioning all at once, something that almost never happens. Historically, Apple tweaks one lever at a time, introducing a faster chip here, a new design there, or a pricing adjustment elsewhere. This time, every lever is moving together in the same direction. Leaks tied to internal development builds, supply chain chatter, and early benchmark traces all suggest that Apple is no longer interested in competing at the extreme top end with massive, expensive machines that only serve a tiny niche of users. Instead, Apple is doubling down on compact desktops that deliver shockingly high performance per dollar, machines designed to be powerful enough for professionals while remaining accessible to a much wider audience. And yes, that means a legendary product is being left behind. The silent phase out of the Mac Pro is the elephant in the room that needs to be addressed early, because it signals just how serious this shift is. The Mac Pro, once the ultimate symbol of professional computing power, is effectively reaching the end of its road. The current Mac Pro already feels like a relic, built around an aging ultra-class chip, delivering performance that is often matched or beaten by much cheaper Macs, while carrying a price tag that makes less sense with every passing year. Developers, creators, and studios have noticed, and so has Apple. Multiple reports now suggest that development of future Ultra chips specifically intended for the Mac Pro has been stopped, not delayed, not reprioritized, but halted entirely. This isn't speculation based on vibes or pessimism. It's based on missing references in internal code, absent supply chain activity, and a total lack of momentum around modular tower hardware inside Apple's ecosystem. Apple has quietly accepted a hard truth. The traditional expandable tower no longer fits its silicon strategy. The old Mac Pro made sense in an era of discrete GPUs, PCIe expansion cards, and user-replaceable components, when raw power required physical separation and scale. Apple Silicon flips that entire model upside down. Modern Apple chips integrate CPU, GPU, memory, and AI accelerators into a single, tightly coupled system. And that integration is exactly what gives Apple Silicon its massive efficiency advantage. But it also makes traditional expansion largely pointless. The Mac Pro's PCI slots can't meaningfully upgrade graphics, external GPUs are unsupported, memory is fixed, and the giant case exists mostly as empty volume. In a world where a compact box can deliver equal or better performance, the tower becomes symbolic rather than practical, and Apple is not a company that sells symbolism for long. Enter the M5 generation, 
the real star of the story, because the true narrative of 2026 isn't about what Apple is killing, but about what it's replacing it with. The M5 generation represents the most aggressive leap Apple has planned since the original M1, and it's not just about faster cores or higher clocks. It's about redefining what entry-level and professional desktops are supposed to be. Two machines sit at the heart of this transformation, the 2026 Mac Mini and the next-generation Mac Studio, which together effectively absorb the roles once spread across the iMac, the Mac Pro, and multiple tiers of high-end PCs. Let's start with the machine that may shock the industry the most, the Mac Mini. The Mac Mini has always been Apple's quiet overachiever, small, affordable, and surprisingly capable, often underestimated until people actually use it. The M4 Mac Mini already blurred the line between entry-level and professional use, but the M5 version is expected to completely erase that line. According to multiple credible sources, Apple plans to offer the Mac Mini with both M5 and M5 Pro configurations, and that alone is significant. But the real headline is what the base M5 chip is capable of. Early performance indicators suggest a dramatic uplift in GPU capability, a leap large enough to put the Mac Mini into serious gaming territory. We're talking about increases of over 30% in GPU-heavy workloads, which translates to modern AAA titles running at high settings with stable frame rates on a machine that fits in one hand. This isn't about turning Mac OS into a gaming console overnight. It's about Apple finally delivering hardware powerful enough that developers can no longer ignore the platform. When a $600 desktop can run demanding games efficiently, the conversation changes across the entire industry. Gaming, however, is only half the story, because in creative workloads, the M5 Mac Mini looks even more impressive. Video editing, 3D rendering, music production, and A-assisted workflows all benefit from Apple's rapidly evolving neural engines, and the M5 generation is expected to deliver major gains in machine learning acceleration, real-time upscaling, and background rendering. Tasks that once required loud, power-hungry workstations can now be handled silently by a compact aluminum box sitting under a monitor. For independent creators, small studios. And developers, this changes everything, because performance is no longer locked behind expensive, oversized machines. Perhaps the most surprising part of the Mac Mini story is the price, because all signs point to Apple maintaining an entry price around the $599 mark. That is not a typo. A machine capable of outperforming many traditional gaming PCs, consuming a fraction of the power, and integrating seamlessly into Apple's ecosystem at a price that undercuts much of the competition is not an act of generosity. It's a calculated strategy. Apple wants the Mac Mini to be the default desktop choice, the device you buy without overthinking, the machine that quietly pulls users away from Windows towers without needing flashy marketing campaigns. Internal code names confirm advanced development progress, and leaked firmware references reveal internal identifiers associated with next-generation Mac Mini models, identifiers Apple only assigns once hardware enters late testing stages. That means this isn't a concept or a distant roadmap slide. It's real hardware already deep in validation. And when Apple reaches this stage, launches are measured in months, not years. Interestingly, there's no indication of a major redesign, and that's actually good news. Apple refreshes desktop design slowly, and the current Mac Mini enclosure is efficient, familiar, and already optimized for thermals. There's no need to change what works. Beyond the Mini, the Mac Studio becomes the true spiritual successor to the Mac Pro, delivering desktop class performance without the bloat. For years, one of the biggest criticisms of Apple's lineup was forced bundling. If you wanted a powerful GPU, you had to buy an equally powerful CPU, even if your workload didn't need it. Reports suggest the M5 architecture may introduce more flexible CPU and GPU scaling internally, not user-replaceable parts, but configurations that are better tailored to real-world needs. That's a quiet but profound shift, because it means less wasted money and more purpose-built machines. Early estimates suggest the M5 Max and M5 Ultra GPUs could rival high-end desktop graphics cards in real-world workloads, not just synthetic benchmarks, 
enabling real-time 3D rendering, advanced motion graphics, and A-assisted workflows to run smoothly in a silent, compact enclosure with no screaming fans or massive power draw. Despite these massive upgrades, pricing is expected to remain relatively stable, allowing the Mac Studio to continue offering a clear value proposition. High-end performance without tower-level pricing, professional reliability without unnecessary bulk. All of this leads to a simple conclusion. 2026 is shaping up to be one of the most important years in desktop computing history, not because of flashy designs or marketing buzz, but because of a fundamental shift in priorities. Apple is betting that users no longer want massive machines to feel powerful. They want performance that disappears into the background, letting them focus on their work, their creativity, and their ideas. The M5 generation isn't just an upgrade, it's a declaration that the desktop computer isn't dying, it's evolving. And when these machines arrive, the rest of the industry will have no choice but to respond.